does get a nice little uh, burble on the exhaust there, doesn't it? It's, it's certainly crisp good. on the upshift. You really don't need that supercharger we had last time we came out, no, do you? I don't think so. Stu and I have had a really interesting day. It's been uh, actually really special. I'm often accused of being a bit of a Euro snob when it comes to cars, and that's probably true, to be fair. Didn't really know what to expect with this car. The engine we knew would be good. I have to say it's over-delivered in every area with the performance of this vehicle. If you're looking at a sports car, it's got to be on your list. Please let us know in the comments what you think of this. I'm blown away. I'm sure you will be as well. Holy smoke. Look at that. Is that a 300 series Land Cruiser? <laughs> Was anyone what a beautiful at, car! Was anyone looking at the Land Cruiser? <laughs> wow! Oh, sorry. No, this is this is today's car. Yeah, sorry, I was just admiring the Land Cruiser. Mm. That sounds like you get arrested in any second now. go straight to the executive summary. This is an exceptional car that surprised both of us. In our defence, we had preconceptions based on our previous experience with less than ideal Corvettes from last century. Now, the most recent car we reviewed on these roads was the Holden Malou GTSR Ute, which on paper is very similar to this C8 Corvette in many ways. They're both GM products, 6.2 litre V8s, rear wheel drive rocket ships except the Malou has a supercharger and this car is only normally aspirated. But the differences are stark. While they have similar performance, this car puts the Malou in quite a different light. Deep down, you can tell that's just the ultimate tradie ute with a Holden badge dosed up on Walkinshaw steroids. But this car is a mid-rear engine sports car designed and built from the ground up on a lightweight alloy chassis, has a poise and balance that the Malou does not have. It has better forward vision and it is just more fun and involving to drive. No doubt General Motors has realised that the Corvette has long been seen as the old man's sports car, more at home in a Florida golf club car park than on a racetrack, and they've made a big effort to appeal to the generally younger buyers of cars like the Audi R8, the entry-level McLarens and the Porsche 911. But if you've been building seven generations of the same car over 65 years, then you'll have a very good idea of what your buyer's like. It still looks like vets of old, something completely new, in the hope of broadening their market and appealing to younger buyers. It's like they've disassembled a Ferrari 458 and cloned their own slightly larger version, complete with this view through glass of the sexy V8. Now, while the Ferrari is curvaceous and svelte, compared to the Corvette's somewhat in-your-face jaggy lines that more closely resemble a Lamborghini Aventador, from behind the wheel, this car is closer to a Ferrari than it is to the Malou Ute. Now, also take into account price. It is significantly cheaper to buy than any comparable Euro, and surely servicing and parts for General Motors are going to be a lot better than your AMG or McLaren horror stories, and you have a very compelling sports car. Now, this particular car does lack some modern electronic gizmos you would expect to find, like adaptive cruise control and autonomous emergency braking, although that is now available in the latest one. But the focus is on driving, and that's what this channel is about, reviewing driver's cars. So this car is delightfully old school in some ways and modern at the same time. So more fool us, but we were both quite surprised at how good it was. So there you are, that's the executive summary. Now come along for the ride and watch our day unfold. Yep. Perfect. So welcome back from, where have you been? Spain. Yeah, I've been in Spain for about six weeks against year, doing some coaching over there with some uh Training the young Aussie, guns. Aussie F4 driver, going well. Learning a lot, getting him ready for the main uh, Spanish F4 series this year. Yeah. He's done, he's done really well. Has this car got adjustable nose lift? It does, it's actually really good. Uh, really quick, seems to be quicker than the Ferrari and Porsche ones that I've used and linked with GPS, of course, in and out of your tricky driveway or the tricky intersection that you go through regularly, you just plug that in and it'll lift up automatically every time you get to that position. So an intersection about a kilometre from his house that we went through with a really, mm. you know, big drain through there, which this car would certainly scrape. Mm. Uh, it just goes up automatically when you reach it. So great idea. Now, you and I are not particularly 
We've never been really enamoured by American cars. We did enjoy the Ford Mustang we, we drove on these same roads. Yeah, well, they're good, but, you know, it's hard to compare them to this car. This is a whole other level. I mean, my idea of American cars, when I win the lottery, I'd love to have a, a 1969 Dodge Charger and, a you know, a, an, an original uh, Stingray, the original Corvette, kind of anything past, you know, 75 I don't know about. You, you quite like the Mako Sharks, the Stingray Yeah, like, you know, they were fantastic. I went to the big swoopy 70s style one with a little fight with last. And, uh, and a lot of people like them, but probably not my thing. There was the Astronaut those. Vintage car, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the all-American sports car. You know, you had Ford had the Mustang and Chevy had the Corvette. This is it. And they went on into the 80s and they're just kind of, you know, pretty forgettable kinds of cars. I mean, this is the eighth generation of the Corvette since the 1950s. In now, recent years, the last probably 10 years, you know, with the Le Mans, wreck cars, GT cars, they've done really well in motorsport in the US and, and at, at Le Mans. So they make a great race car, there's no doubt about that. So that's where we've ended up. So what mode are we in? Just in... Well, we're just in uh, tour mode there. I think probably the go-to mode is sport. Uh -huh. On tour, for me, the steering is a little light, but I mean, as a daily driver, it's actually pretty good. I just prefer to have it a little tighter on the steering, a little heavier, so I can feel it. You know, often we jump in cars, don't we? We go from touring to sport to racetrack or whatever on the modes, and mm. half the time you can feel a little bit of difference, but often not a lot. Mm -hmm. This is a really big, definite change between the modes, and I think sport's really the way to go. Okay. Go to track mode. Now that's tighten up the steering, the suspension, yeah. I mean, the gear changes, the brake feel, the engine sound, yeah. Yeah. and you can set up your own Z mode or custom mode. Using this rotary selector is the simplest way to adjust modes, but as you'd expect, if you want to go to the track, and clearly Chevrolet do want you to, there's an endless amount of configuration possible in the My Mode and the Z Mode, okay, Z Mode we'd say out here, on cars with the Z51 Performance Pack, which is all Australian delivered cars. You can mess around with the electronic diff, launch control, shock absorber behavior, throttle response, brake and steering feel, ride height, and yes, Dorothy, you can turn stability control completely off if you want to. It's a long learning curve. We're not going there today, but it's good to know. Track mode, it does an incredible overlay. You, you select what circuit you're on and you get the whole thing, lap timing. It's just like my V-Box data that I, yeah. I get. So you've got the vision from multiple cameras plus the circuit overlay and lap times and all that kind of stuff, G-forces and, and all the stuff that you're too busy to see on the dash because you're concentrating on your driving. Yeah. This um, centre console is kind of makes you feel like a fighter pilot, doesn't it? Like you're in an F-15 or something. It's really unusual. I like it. I think it's fantastic. You, you'll never get muscle memory of where all these buttons are. Now, this is mine. This is my seat, heating, cooling, aircon for me. Got it. This is all and, mine. And this is yours. Got it. This is mine and this is yours. That's really good. That's that very cool US V8 engine note, you yeah. know. It actually, it sounds better than the Maloo. It sounds way better than that, I suppose, you know, it's just a normally aspirated engine. It spins up really quickly, doesn't it? I mean, it gets up in those revs like a much smaller capacity V8 would. Mm. Uh, it's a big lump of an engine in there. Mm. 488 horsepower, so about 365 kilowatts, something like that. 630 newton meters. I'm going to have to tighten my hat up. Yeah, me too. We probably are a bit Euro snobs, really, car-wise, you. Yeah. yeah. You often dismiss a lot of other brands, and we shouldn't do that because I should be a bit more open-minded. Super impressed with this car so far. It's so tight. The build quality is so good. I guess it must have been difficult in the US to, to break from convention of every other Corvette and yep. virtually every other American car bar, probably GT40s, has been front engine. Mm. To stick the engine behind the drive is a really big call, cool but uh, you know, there's no doubt the engine is now in the correct spot in the car. Yeah, and it just works so well. The DCT transmission, eight speed, is just brilliant. Yeah, probably one of the best I've driven. Um, that is far better than I thought it would be. It's the, the first Corvette to be offered without a manual transmission option. And I like to heel and toe, and I like to do all that that stuff but when the transmission is this good and it's so fast yeah 
Actually, I lied. For a very brief period in '82, they had a, they had no no manual option on one of the early Corvettes. But right. ride comfort's fantastic in sports. Like this is a pretty bumpy road here. So this is the 3LT with the uh, the 3LT with the extra Napa leather, what's little what's car, carbon fiber bits and stuff. In Australia, we got the, only the 2LT and the 3LT. This okay. is this has got the whole lot. But that package is called something. Oh, there's a, a Z51 package. That's Z51. the performance. All Australian yeah. cars got that. It's a, that's the performance sports package. I've switched back over to the LCD uh, camera in the rearview mirror, and uh, it does take a couple of seconds to focus the eyes on it. Mm -hmm. The A pillars are pretty good too. The vision's great. Yeah, really, it's no problem at all. Gets up on that limiter uh, way quicker than I uh, anticipate. Were you in manual mode then? Yeah, I was in manual mode, in sport oh. manual mode. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why it was hanging on the limiter so long. I think something's gone wrong with yeah, the gearbox. No, it was it's because me, uh, it was you. It spins up super quick for a big engine. It's super responsive. That's you. It's very, very good. It's going to be hard to find something that is much better than that. Well, oh, a little bit of traction control there. Yeah. I was actually glad you weren't in track mode then because you would have left two big licorice streaks in Mars. Yeah. <laughs> Super impressive. Yeah. It really would be nice to give it a red hot go up here, wouldn't it? We'll be uh, satisfied with just giving it a little bit of a blast here and there. Yeah. And we are sensible, because we're old people, aren't we? We've got a bit here. Days. See how we go. All right, 0 to 100. <laughs> the old. <laughs> Again, like the, the dampening is fantastic. That's in track mode. Yeah. Pretty rough bit of road there. The car is really yeah. had good traction. Solid, yeah. Good Brilliant. old hairy chested V8. Brilliant traction. Nothing like it. Me and my puffy electric cars, my 928 yeah. EV. The um the old C C7 Corvette got known as the old man's sports car because everyone that bought it, well more than half the people that bought it were over 55. And then Chevrolet looked at the demographics and found that young people weren't buying them, they were buying R8 Audis and 911 GT3s and things like that instead. So they, they wanted to appeal to younger people and they found out the way to do it was put the engine behind yeah. and make it really much more a competitive car. They used the 458 Ferrari as a real benchmark. Well, you can see they've done that, can't you? They're very familiar with the 458. It really has quite a very a similar feel. So I think this is a car that would appeal to young people, don't you? Definitely. Why don't we see more of them on the road? It's a weird thing. There's an awful lot for sale. Seems to be a lot for sale. Yeah. Um, I think I've seen one of these on the road yeah. in Australia. I've seen one or two, maybe. Um, 57 of them for sale. Yeah. And they must be just decorating garages all over the place because the average mileage on them is around 4,000 Ks. So I think people must sort of buy them, drive them once or twice, scratch that itch, yep. and then they, uh, for some reason, they park them. I hope they'll appreciate. I reckon they probably bought them in COVID times, because these came out in 2021 in this country, right. when prices were really elevated, and these would have looked like quite a bargain, being, you know, a 50% discount on an Audi R8 or, an, or a GT3 or an Aston Martin Vantage or something like that. But now prices have come back a bit. I can't explain why there are 57 of them for sale. Yeah, it seems quite strange, doesn't it? Two thirds of them coupes like this. I mean, this is a this is a target top, but there is a convertible version as well. There's about 20 of those for sale. They're recognisable because they don't have that clear engine cover that this one's got. It's, it's a good compromise, isn't it? I think with the you know what we, I'd call it a target top, or yep. they call the coupe. The head-up display is really good, Stuart. When you oh. go to sport mode, it gives you the taco and a head-up display as well. Oh, really? So uh, even with, I've got Polaroid sunglasses on, I can still see that. Usually they disappear yeah. with a set of Polaroid sunglasses, but they're actually, uh, that's really impressive. Now, a lot of them are priced around that $230,000 mark. Now, if you want to 
a GT3, even four or five years old, you'd be paying well over 300. Because if you, if you say I want a minimum 350 kilowatt, like four, over 450 horsepower, uh, and 0 to 100 around three and a half seconds or so, it's a, it's a small field. It is a small field. For me, I think the, the real comparable cars are the Audi R8, albeit all wheel drive, and the McLaren 570S, which yes. I've driven a lot. Yeah. I can't help comparing it to the Maloo that we took out last time. That's the last car we reviewed. Yeah, hard to compare to that. That's so vastly different. You just can't compare it to this. This is a out and out sports car. Yeah, particularly the mid-engine configuration. Yeah. Well, you might have been wondering why we have this large transmission tunnel when there's no longer a transmission to go in it. Good question. Is it some kind of contraceptive barrier? Could be. But the real reason is that it's for the high voltage battery. What? Yes, that's right. They're already selling an EV enhanced version of this car called the E-Ray. It's already in the USA and it's coming here this year. It'll add a lightweight electric motor up front to bump up the power by another 160 horsepower, delivered through the front wheels. And where will the battery go? Right here. Nice and central to retain good weight balance. Now the battery will only be two kilowatts capacity, which is actually quite small, surprisingly so. My electric Porsche 928 project that you've been following on the channel will have a battery 20 times bigger. And so in fully electric mode, the Corvette E-Ray will only have a range of about five kilometers. So what the hell's the point you ask? Now I can only see two, no three, main reasons for the Corvette E-Ray. One, the electric motor gives it extra traction as an all-wheel drive car, and it'll drop the all-important zero to 100 time even further. Chevrolet reckon at least another half a second shaved off, so we're talking 2.5. So now you won't lose face when you find yourself sitting up next to a Tesla all-wheel drive at the lights. But try keeping up with that in your tire-frying Hellcat Red Eye. It's not about horsepower, buddy, it's about grip. Second reason, so you can leave quietly on a Sunday morning without waking the neighbors. Stealth mode, get it? Kind of reinforces the whole stealth fighter design, doesn't it? Shows how considerate you are. But there's a third reason. It's probably to get GM diehards used to the idea of electrification very gradually. It's like weaning a baby, you do it slowly. Some people are so resistant to change. Now, can you imagine how triggered some people are going to be when they see a front-wheel drive Corvette arrive silently at the shops? Oh my God. Now, it gets quite slow up here. Just come to stop here, just careful. We're going straight ahead. But just be careful, people roll through. And Maybe this will be might, a slow drive up here. Lift this up. Yep. Lift the front. Oh, it's a bit of a steep hill. Do you think it'll get up there? Engage low range. The ergonomics are great. The, the seat's brilliant. This has got the uprated seat spec in the car and it was, um, yep. yeah, just superb. This seat's really good too. So many adjustments. The lateral support's brilliant. And, whoa, you got the lot. Got everything. Ba-doo. Now, maybe because I'm out of the car. Yeah. yeah. I had to manually unlock it. It's a beautiful color. Just that little bit of sun there, yeah. you can see it's a sort of coppery, bronzy colour. You think, oh, it's brown, but no, it's not. It's, no. it's a lot of copper in it. It's... I'm long overdue for a trip to New Zealand to come and see uh, the amazing, David's amazing car collection. Yeah, super impressive. Currently uh, leading both F2 championships, teams and drivers, so uh, doing well. Uh, speaking of impressive, Big 305 ZR20s on the back and 19s on the front, I think. 245 19s. What's the brake pedal feel like? It's got a really nice firm uh, feel to it. it. It bites, the, the bite is very quick, instant, which I like. Mm -hmm. Steering, pointy. Really nice. We'll go into sport mode there. Okay. And it really does tighten up nicely. Touring mode is for me a little bit light on the steering wheel. They're proper magnetic ride control dampers yeah, too, so they, they work do. work really well, don't they? Yeah. So I hope our uh, American subscribers enjoy this. Uh, yeah. They're not used to seeing a right-hand drive version of their, uh, their hero car. And they, they're not converted out here either. This is the way they came out of the factory in Kentucky, was it? I think? Yeah, in Kentucky. That's, well, that's really good, isn't it? The GM are doing that. It's got really good body rigidity. Here's a really little rough section here. Cattle crossing. So that's pretty impressive. Not, not that's the faintest in, rattle there. That's in tour mode, not a rattle. Yeah. It's as solid as anything. Beautiful. 
you'd have one of these now, wouldn't you? Yeah, look, I absolutely would. I mean, it's actually a really pleasant car to just toodle along in quietly, isn't it? It is, isn't it? The ergonomics are fantastic. Um, a lot of adjustment here. You know, for me, I can have my hands there at nine and three in the world. Perfect spot. I've got an elbow on the door handle there and an elbow on the console here, and my hands are still in the perfect spot, so it's super comfortable to drive. Mm. And incidentally, I've been driving just the last little while with a mirror, rear view mirror, back in the regular mirror feature, not the LCD camera oh, yeah. screen. You can switch between them? Just, yeah, is, you can is switch that, between is that the them. switch? Oh yeah, there you go. So there's the camera, and there's your normal mirror. And I've been trying to get used to the camera, uh, but I actually don't like it. You can't see a ton of uh, information out there when you're just using the regular mirror, but it's enough. Okay. And I can see a part of my uh, cool V8 engine there, so. Ferrari style. Yeah, much better. One interesting thing you might not expect with these cars, the rear track is actually narrower than the front. It's, and it's surprisingly, it's the same on a GT3 Porsche. Yeah. A lot of modern fast sports cars yeah. do that. Um, it's deceiving because when you look at the car, you wouldn't think that was the case. If you got no. this big wide back end on it, yeah. it doesn't look that way. No, because it, it aids high speed stability yeah. and turn in response and makes weight transfer less and so on, as you, as you know. Well, it makes a lot but of sense, little... doesn't it, to anyone that's ever driven a 930 turbo Porsche on a track, which was the <laughs> other way around. Yeah. Uh, the exception is the Nissan GTR, which has got the same track front and rear, but that's an all-wheel drive car. Right? Actually, comparing this to a 911, this is, if you had 911, it weighs about 14, 50 kilos, this is, this is 1,600, so it's about 150 kilos more. Not a real lot, yeah. but a Nissan GTR is significantly heavier again. And it looks like a much bigger car again, but it's actually not. They're actually all quite similar in size. Uh, the McLaren is actually shorter and lower and wider than this car. This thing, it looks like it's as wide as a whole yeah, government yeah. bus, but it's actually, the McLaren's even wider. Porsche's a little bit narrower. Uh, but they're actually a reasonably small footprint on the road. What are you going to drive at this price point? I know it's still a lot of money. Yeah. Well, compared it's, to the competition that's yeah. comparable performance, it's not. not. Not when you look at the way it actually performs. If you own one of these, what's it doing in your garage? Get out and why, drive have, it. why have you only got 3,000 Ks on it? Get it outdoors and take it for a run. Look at this weather. Come on. Autumn and spring. Yeah, this is the time you want to be driving these cars. Take, take the top off. Happy days. I do like the fact that we've got this Targa element, or uh, just the coupe as they call it. Mm. This gives you the best of both worlds, doesn't it? It, it? it does. There's a little bit of wind buffeting here. I don't know if you can hear it. You're completely deaf. I'm only three quarters deaf. <laughs> I think those boys would have heard that. <laughs> Didn't really know what to expect with this today, Stu. The performance is outstanding, isn't it? And not just engine power, the things that are really impressing me, the transmission is brilliant, the paddle shift mechanism is outstanding, the ride with the electromagnetic shocks is brilliant in all the different settings, mm. it's so compliant, puts the power down so well, the car is so sure footed for a big, very powerful sports car, it's just absolutely superb. It's not as sharp as a Ferrari 458 and I wouldn't have expected it to be. Um, but it is still very, very good. That's a 200 kilogram lighter car, by the way. It is. I mean, that's really the difference. Yeah. Little chop chop there. Yeah. And down the first there. Just shifts so beautifully, doesn't it? Traction out of these slow corners. Wow, just superb. That's outrageous. Yeah. And it does everything so well. Stops. For a car that really doesn't have a roof. It's rigid. It's very rigid, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of fun. Love it. Just a bit over 200,000, you can supposedly get a new one or you can get one that's already here with delivery miles, I'd be, I'd be doing that. Look, if you're a newcomer to the channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. Thank you, Fraser. 
that's two of your amazing cars we've uh, had the privilege of. It's great to have friends that support us uh, with their investments and uh, mm. allow us to use their beautiful machinery for our channel. You know what we need next? We've just done two General Motors cars in a row. We're long overdue to do a fast Ford. Yeah. So if, you, if you're in our part of the world and you've got an XR8 or a GT or an XR6 Turbo, something with a barra, something like that, you'd like us to review it, let us know. We'd love to do one. And if you are new here, have a look around the channel. We've got old cars, we've got classic cars, we've got modern fast cars, racing cars, the Revolution I particularly liked. While Mark's been away, I've been busy. As you probably know, I'm a bit of a Porsche 928 fan. I've got a couple of them and I'm converting an old basket case one to electric. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment, give us a like if you enjoy it. Tell us what we're doing wrong, tell us what we're doing right. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks, thanks guys, I hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have.